Hello, welcome to the 301st episode of Pray Every Day, where I pray you through the Bible verse by verse. This is Mary DeMuth, and we're walking through, this is the last day actually, of walking through scriptures from the seven deadly friendships. So I'd just like to thank you for hanging with me as we've done all these relational scriptures over the past three months. It's been such a blessing, but I am looking forward to kind of going verse by verse again. It's been um, it's been a longing of my heart for a while now that I've been doing these isolated verses. Uh, and and just so grateful for all of you who have um, supported the podcast through Patreon and also who have picked up the Seven Deadly Friendships. It's great. Uh, today, our last relational verse is a really good one. Psalm 23, 5 in the CEB, the Common English Bible. And it says this, You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Mind if I pray for you? Lord, I am transported back to France when I read this verse because there were some enemy-like people in my life and I couldn't escape them. And you brought this verse to mind and it was so, so helpful and so beautiful that you set a table in the presence of my enemies, in the midst of them, in front of them, that there is a feast to be had even when, even when things are not right relationally in my life. And Lord, I know I'm guilty. Perhaps those listening are guilty of thinking, well, I'll be happy when, or I'll be content when, or I'll be okay when, or I'll be like growing in Christ when all my relationships are exactly where I want them to be. Or if I don't have any more enemies, or if those people leave me, or if they, um, they're they removed from my life somehow. And Lord, this verse the shepherd's psalm says, you set a table for me right in front of my enemies. Not outside, not um, across the pasture, but right in front. And so, Lord, I pray for the person today who's battling a relationship that feels like an enemy. And would you please give them the perspective of the feasting in the midst of it, to find you in the midst of it, because you actually are the feast, Jesus. You are the one who gives us joy and peace and kindness and all the things we prayed about, about Galatians 5 and the fruits of the Spirit. You bring it all. You are that feast. You are my feast. And Lord, um, this you said that in this world we will have troubles, but take care. You have overcome the world. And so, yes, it doesn't mean that when we meet you that everything's going to be easy and peachy. It actually means things are going to get harder because the Spirit of God rests upon us and there is a battle going on. And because there's a battle, there's going to be enemies. But you're gracious to us in the midst of our enemies. You, you set us a table. So would you give us that visual picture today? Would you help us when things are really, really bad and the, the words are flying or the accusations are flaring? Would you help us to picture a banquet with a large table, a tablecloth, candles, silverware, great china, uh, lots of food piled high. There is a feast in knowing you. And there's also a feast in knowing that you have endured so much, Jesus, at the hands of mankind. You understand, so who better to have a feast with than with you, who gets it, who's been in that place in a far more hard way than we will ever experience. Lord, um, we want to be bathed. We want our cups to spill over. And when I think of a cup overflowing its boundaries, I do think of abundance. I do think of effervescent or overflowing joy, and I pray that over my friend today. You're really good, Lord, at taking a bad situation and pouring some joy into it, pouring some perspective, pouring some hope, pouring some life. And so I pray that today for my friend, you would pour hope and life and joy and perspective into their cups, and it would overflow they would lift that cup to their lips and be grateful for that living water that you give and that they would look around as they sit at that banqueting hall knowing that your banner over them is love, that they are chosen, they are loved, they are your child. So Lord, thank you for the feast. Thank you for the table. And this is you know right around in, uh, in the aftermath of Thanksgiving. So it's just really appropriate to be able to pray that for all the people listening today. Jesus, I love you. I'm grateful for you. I worship you. I think you're amazing and you are everything to me. So I love you and I pray this in your name. Amen. 
If this prayer um, has impacted you, I would love it if you could share it with someone who it might also impact. Just share this particular one. Go to marydemuth.com and you can find this particular episode. And then just click the share button for a friend. I would really appreciate that. And I hope you have an amazing day as we get ready. We're going to start to um, read scriptures, getting us ready for Advent and for the Incarnation, which I'm super excited about. So that will start tomorrow. Have a great day. Hey everyone, this World Wednesday, we actually don't have a World Wednesday, so I'm sorry for that, but um, I've uh, been running out of folks to do this, so if you happen to have a friend who speaks another language or you speak a second language, I would so appreciate your help. So you can go to marriedmuth.com, and on the right-hand side, there's a little microphone, and you can actually pray the Lord's Prayer, which is a really simple prayer. In um, with that microphone. So if you do that, go ahead and state your name and uh, where you're uh, recording from, and then just go ahead and, and also the language you're going to be recording in, and then go ahead and record uh, that prayer, and we'll add it at the end of another World Wednesday. Um, not sure if we'll have enough in August, but hopefully... Uh, hopefully you'll hear this and you'll record it and we'll start having some more World Wednesdays starting in September. So thanks so much and I hope you have a great day.